Brought to you by DIS, keeping companies connected with cloud-based solutions. Come on, City. Stuart, good to chat with you again, as always. Um, have you had a chance to reflect with the players at all about Saturday's performance and result? And if so, what have you seen back? Yeah, not with the players, no. Um, we've just let them get out this morning and go do the, the training. Um, we'll do that between now and obviously the game tomorrow, but certainly with the staff, myself. Um, I think this, the two main things from Saturday, um, firstly, possession of the ball wasn't good enough from back to front or even into the middle of the park. I think three of their really good chances, counter-attacks, which they're good at, they're set up for, we give away really cheap possession. Obviously, the third goal being a case in point. But even first half, we give one away and the lad gets through one-on-one -on -one and which saves. Second half, the same. Um, really um, sloppy and slack playing possession. Um, and we got punished for it. Um, and I think, just as importantly, our intensity without the ball wasn't um, strong enough on what it's been recently. Um, now, whether that was losing an early goal, they play in a certain manner and they've got the experience to see a game through when you know they're on the ball and they're a good team in possession. Um, but certainly we need to show more energy um, to get to the ball and stop them playing. So two things, really, as much as a lot of things, but poor in possession and poor out of possession, which isn't a good ingredient to win a game of football. And it's such a, a short space of time between that game and Tuesday as well. How difficult is it to be able to try and rectify those problems quickly in such a short space of time? Is it even possible? Yeah, of course it is. Because of the, the, what we're talking about is um, not in anything structurally or tactically. It be better on the ball and go close your opponent down. So them, them things uh, should be not basics in football running about is a basic that's an ingredient that you know you should give every everything you've got every game every time you go out there but um yeah we were just we were careless in possession now did did they press us more than most teams probably so so you've got to take that into account as well but there's no um i get it if we're trying to make 40 50 yard passes but if we can't pass from here to be over 10 yards in that game not you know which we've been doing better recently then we will struggle to get any momentum in a game um and likewise, the other thing about just closing down and running about, um, yeah, that's easy rectified. Does this at all press the reset button on the good work that you started to create going into Saturday's game? No, it can't do because, um, as I said to you before, and I've said on numerous occasions, um, you know, it got, football goes up and down and highs and lows and we've got to try to make things um, as simple as we can for the players. Um, but what I will say, probably, um, and that's why we've not done the team yet today, plus we don't know who's going to be available, if I'm honest. But we, we, we settled on a shape that we're going to play, but certain people in that per, in the personnel that are missing in it probably doesn't suit the shape. So we've maybe got to look at other things. But as I said to you after Saturday, I don't want to make any excuses um, or give the players excuses that we're chopping and changing all the time. Um, but sometimes we've got to look at it. Certain shapes will suit certain individuals. Um, and certain people, so, so personnel will show a shape that we, we want to go with. But um, no, listen, bottom line is once we get out there, we've got to be better in possession and out of possession naturally. But um, we will try to keep as much as we can and best we can to a, a shape that we think suits us. Um, but in that, you need your, your key components uh, being available naturally. Is this current situation, Stuart, more of a test of the player's character as opposed to ability, or is it a bit of both, do you think? A, a, bit, a bit of both, uh, if I'm honest. Um, again, you know, listen, football is ultimately about players. And, you know, as Gordon Strachan like, quite rightly said, when managing Scotland, the better players you have, the better team you'll be. And for us, you know, the, the, the better players we've got available, the better we'll be. So I've no doubt we'll be stronger in, in the coming weeks. Um, but until that time where we can you know, get some key players back, then we, we've got to do certainly better than we did on Saturday. That's that's a given. Um, but we can't let it derail us um, from what we want to do. Um, it was a disappointing performance and result on the back of a couple of decent performances. But we've got a long, long way to go. Um, there's no doubt about that. But while we're in this transition, if you like, or trying to get players back or settling on a, a formation, then we've got to pick up points um, and it, you know even if it's away from home getting a point to start with and getting back on the road but um, we just need to start you know um, putting more points on the board naturally because it's been a disappointing start How is that injury list at the moment? Is it any worse after Saturday? Um, 
worse in the fact that one, one of the starters definitely won't be travelling with us. Slightly better than a couple that were missing Saturday might, but we won't decide until tomorrow. Again, um, with hamstrings, which we've got, or a lot of people have got problems with, sitting on a, a coach for four hours on the way down to a game um, is not the best preparation. And likewise, we don't want to bring a couple of people back too soon and be out for three, two, three more week, which we've had with Zelly and Evo. So it's a balancing act. So we might be with one short. Well, we'll certainly be one more short from Saturday um, that started the game. Will it be a risk to take a couple with us and wait till tomorrow night? We'll, we'll see on that. But, um, you know, hopefully in the, in, the, in the coming weeks we'll have more, more available. How much does that influence then? You've suggested it already, the way that you set up. And, and do you look to, to change the system at all without giving too much away to no, suit no, the players that you've got available? Yeah, no, it's a fair question. No, we, we, I'm going to uh, debate that and look at things. I've got a couple of games to watch of audience and how they play 4-3-3. Um, if you look at them, obviously, you say they're on the back of four, four defeats from the other night, but... Them defeats have been home at Newport in the Cup 2-1, away at Colchester 2-1, another 2-1, and then, then that, well, I won't call it Mickey Mouse Cup, the other cup um, that they played in. I don't know if they got beat 3-1. So they've had tight games, but they've also won at Harrogate, beat Harrogate home 3-0, and beat Bolton 4-0 in not so recent time. So uh, we know how they play, or we've got an idea how the, the formation will be. Um, so, again, we'll have a good um, have a good think about it on the way down tomorrow and tonight and this afternoon and watch some more, more games and, and see basically, and again, tomorrow, we'll have a more idea who's going to be actually available for us, which make the um, the selection of the shape um, will we'll make his mind up, really. Mm. I, I read your comments with Simon uh, after the game on Saturday about the free agent market. Just to, to follow up on that ever so slightly, is that a, an absolute flat no from you, come what may? Or if, and I realise it's a big if, the right person comes around with the right criteria. You are open still to, to looking into that market if it was to be the right person. Of course. I must have near on 100 agents in my phone who are on, who, who get in touch all the time when there's people available. Um, and recently, there was one who the boy ended up going up to Scotland. We couldn't uh, do a deal. It was asking for too much money, if I'm honest. Um, but all the other ones recently... There's, there's, been, there's been nobody out there um, or no one certainly that would fit our criteria um, and as I said before if they've not had a club since for like eight months now they ain't going to be coming in straight and playing the intensity we want them to play at um, so it can't be a knee-jerk reaction as I said before we're hopeful of um, you know having more bodies back available in the next couple of weeks but um, I think if we take anybody in now and expect them to go into a game because we've got a, couple, you know, a lot of injuries at the moment that would be. It wouldn't. It's. It wouldn't be sensible. It wouldn't be right. It would. In fact, it wouldn't. It wouldn't be able to be done. You know, players can't be out eight, seven, eight, nine months and expect to come straight into a first team game. So, um, no. But that doesn't mean to say we've said to everyone, don't give us any players, don't offer us any players. We're open to anybody. But you know, for them, for to to bring them quickly in to play, um, wouldn't be able to happen now. And it leads on to the point of, of how big a factor now more than ever really is the, the strength and conditioning of players and, and the fitness side of things and the way that you you manage the squad not only the one that you've got but any potential players that, that may or may not be coming into the football club yeah of course you know and you know it's, it's frustrating naturally you know it was only a month ago I kept saying well, three weeks ago you know the board was clear and we we're doing good and then well probably over in the last month um we've had soft muscle tissue injuries which have been people are going to be out three four weeks with and uh, they try to come back a little bit quicker and you know have a little setback so we're, we're more aware than that than, than we normally would be unfortunately but um, listen it's, it's a fact and as I said before you know we've got a squad of 26 players in queue including the, the four young kids that joined us at the beginning of the season so there's we've, we've got the numbers um, we've just been unfortunate that um, a lot of the players that are out at the moment are, are key players to how we want to play Um but, you know, that's it. We, we get on with it and, you know, we've got to certainly do, don't matter, we've got to certainly do better in possession of the football um, and we've got to, um, you know, show more intensity than we did against Salford. You've almost answered my next question, really, and it's almost a bit of a cliche question to ask a manager, but what what do you want to see 
from your players tomorrow night, Stuart? What, what's the message to them? What will you be satisfied with? Uh, well, <laughs> you know, certainly not losing the game. You know, we've got, we've got to bring something back, I think. We've got, we've got to, you know, get some points on the board. Um, just a, a, a real committed effort, um, you know, which, you know, as I said recently, I, I can never put... And, and I'm not pointing the finger at the commitment on Saturday. I just didn't think we had that intensity to go close down and close the ball and get about the pitch that we, we normally would have had. Now, as I said before, Salford... Um, I've got good rotation in the front three, in the midfield three, and they made it difficult for us. You know, they did move off the ball well and find pockets. Um, but it, we've got to look after the ball first and foremost better. Um, so I'll be looking for that, better in possession um, on, than on Saturday. We've done it well recently. We've been good on the ball um, and made opportunities, you know, in the last few games. But um, certainly um, wasn't good enough Saturday. So we need an improvement in that area. Go well tomorrow, Stuart. Cheers. Cheers, thank you. You mentioned the, the intensity there a couple of times. And despite obviously welcoming the break of the, the week between games, do you think that could have had some bearing on it that the, they didn't have the intensity of a match so close to it? Um, I, I think I, I look at the side that we've got, we had one of the lads sort of carrying a little bit of an injury going into the game, where we probably shouldn't have started him. We had another one in Evo just coming back who's been out a long while and takes a wee while to get into the intensity. I think there's a few reasons for it, but it, we need to be, that That was one of the, um, again, you look at the GPS afterwards, the, the amount of um, yardage covered, but the intensity runs and it, it, it was just, you know, one as big as it has been. Um, and again, as I said, you, you've got to give the opposition a little bit of credit for where they moved off the ball. But um, all in all, you know, we, we, we've, we've, we've got to raise it more than that and certainly got to do that on Tuesday night on a, a much bigger pitch. And following on from that, are you, are you happy with what you've seen in training today then with the intensity? No, I've got to be honest, Pete, we haven't we, we done a great deal. We can't do any contact without a manager we've got, so it's just been a basic, um, for the lads that played, um, a, pa a, a bit of a passing and a bit of a, a, a box. The other lads that didn't play have done a bit of crossing and finishing. We can't afford to have small-sided games at this moment in time, unfortunately, because we get any more injuries, with, you know, without the bare bones. So, um, you know, listen, they, they, they did what they needed to do. Um, and we've, we've got our minds fully set now on the Orient. And of course, it's not just Bradford's in this situation, though, is it? I mean, every, even at the Premiership level, we're seeing these regularly occurring injuries. So it's something that I suppose this season teams are going to have to accept will be part of the game. Yeah, definitely so. We, we Listen, we've just been a little bit unfortunate. So two or three of us key players. Uh, when I look back at the team that played at Bolton or the team that won at Mansfield, you know, four or five of the lads from the good performances we've had, uh, we're missing Saturday. Um, but as I said, that it's an opportunity for other players to come in and, 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 and certainly as a group, be better than we did on Saturday. So the only way we can put that you know, we, we can't change the result. We've got to make sure we put in a strong performance um, at Orient on uh, tomorrow night, obviously. Cheers, Stuart. Good luck tomorrow. Hey, Jack. Hi, Stuart. Hi, Sam. You're saying, obviously, um, you know, as you said again on Saturday and as, as you, the way you like to approach games, I mean, you're a positive manager, likes to have a go at things. I mean, would you, would you take a very sort of ugly, scrappy point down there just to, as you say, come back with something? Yeah, well, <laughs> you, I, I never like to say that as a manager, you take happy with a point. But I think when you're travelling the distance we are with the injuries we've got, um, on the back of audience, you know, positive home results recently, a three or four nil victory over Harrogate and Bolton. Um, but I, 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 we want a better performance. Obviously, we want a better result, but I want a better performance than we got on Saturday. Um, I don't want to go down there, back to the walls and nick a nil nil and be dreadful. Um, but if you, it, I, first and foremost, we, we want to really put in a performance that gives us an opportunity to get a victory. Um, after the game, if we take a point, then, you know, it won't be a, um, it won't be a disaster going to Orient and getting a point, that's for sure. As I said, with the, some of the results they've had at home. So, um, but we'll never look at, look at it like that, but we need to, uh, an improvement on performance first and foremost, and hopefully get, you know, if not get the three, make sure we get one. Yeah. Cause I mean, you know, some managers might look to perhaps go down there and stifle things and just, as you say, make it, Bitty, break it up, just grab something and go on with it. But as you say, that's, that's, that's also that's not in your, your mindset anyway, isn't it? And you don't want the team to be playing like that, do you? No, I, I, I always look at how we can hurt the opposition and we've got to be able to carry a threat. Um, 
listen, I've, I've managed sides before when we've had to go to places, go to my Scotland time or wh wherever there, where we've had to set up, you know, to, to, to really defend and sit in and try to hit on the counter. I don't think we've really got a side that we can do that at the moment in time. And it's not something, you know, I, I'm comfortable doing. But we've just got to defend better, first and foremost, not give the ball away in dangerous areas that get, let, lets teams counter-attack on us, which we did both in the, certainly a lot more against Salford, but against Exeter as well. We've got to cut out, limit the opportunities the opposition are having against us. I mean, even, you know, it's things like set players where we've been OK on. You know, the, Henderson has two free headers. Richard makes a fantastic save and then he has another one that second half. It's good movement by him. It's good delivery from them. Um, but we've got to restrict the amount of saves that Richard's are making at the moment. Um, so we've got to be better defensively. But that comes from all over the pitch, as I said to you, you know, on, on the other day. You know, Clayton's back in there for the, the second goal, looking after Clark. He switches off and they, they score the goal from it. So defending just doesn't come from the goalkeeper, defenders from all around the pitch. And we've got to do his jobs better to make sure we, you know, we can get back to try and have some clean sheets. And as you said about also the, the players coming in now, they've got to take this opportunity because presumably it, it's in a sense, it's like they're, they're, this is their chance. If not, you say you've got January coming up in a couple of months time and you're going to have to look at it and perhaps think, you know, player A or player B, well, they've had their opportunities. They've not taken it. We're going to have to look for someone else in that area. Yeah, that's football. Um, that's, you know, up and down the country ever since I've been a player. If you take your opportunities, you'll you'll get chances. If you fail to take the opportunities, it's not a threat. It's just it's fact of life, isn't it? You know, it's like in anything, any walk of life. Oh, it's unstable. Are you still there? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Sorry, sorry. Um, you know, if the opportunities are there, grab them. If not, then somebody else will do. So, I think that's just a um, in, in in every most walks of life anyway. And I think this season more than ever because of obviously the opportunities for players because every manager's got to sort of shake things up and you've got the subs. No one can really say, well, I wasn't really given a chance to show what I can do, can they? No, we've had certain games. And like I said, I've, I've always said, listen, when we're, it's not just in the games as well, you know, day-to-day -day training, attitudes, where to, where to go about your work and that, which, you know, I can't point a finger at anybody at that and that point of it, to be honest. Um, but we, we do certainly need our inf more influential players back on the park and, uh, you know, when we get that, I've no doubt we will be stronger um, and look then more to pick up more points, that's all. Cheers, Stuart. Best of luck tomorrow night. Thank you. Hello, Stuart. It's Leon at the YP. Hi, Liam. Hello. I've just got one, really. It seems to be one of those situations, Stuart, where your back's against the wall, you've got injuries, it's a long coach trip, a bad result on Saturday. But sometimes it can turn, can't it, with, with some result, if you, you can, you know, dig out a result, yep. it could be the you know the lead on to, to something a lot better and turn things around that's certainly what i believe in and the staff believe in and need the players to believe in as well yeah naturally without a doubt um you know it's it's a game yeah. that once we've had you know the disappointment on saturday then yeah we want a game on tuesday you know where it is um no excuses you know we go down there and we've got to put in a far brighter performance on saturday there's no doubt about that and, and i'm confident we will do um, but as you say, a result and a three-pointer down there changes the... I, I, mean, I look at so many teams this season, you're going through highs and lows, yeah. one minute it's all, they've got beat here and they've got beat there, and um, next minute you go get a result. You know, there's a lot of league, a lot of teams in our league, and a lot of teams in every league, to be honest, you're looking at things and thinking, you know, you get yeah. something there that changes things, and, and that's football. But yeah, it's... Um, you know, I said we might not be the, the highest one on people's coupons tomorrow to get an away victory. But when yeah. the chips are down, that's down to us as characters to stand up and, and grasp it and, and put in a performance and that hopefully can get us the three points. Brought to you by DIS, keeping companies connected with cloud-based solutions. Come on, City!